Hello, and welcome to the Scholarly Communications video series from the Himmelfarb Health Sciences Library. My name is Sarah Hoover, and I'm the Scholarly Publishing Librarian at the George Washington University's Himmelfarb Health Science Library. Today, we will be briefly talking about information resources related to the 2023 NIH Data Management and Sharing Policy. Let's get started. In today's session, I will provide a brief overview of the 2023 NIH Data Management and Sharing Policy and describe the elements of a Data Management and Sharing, or DMS, plan. I will also discuss GW and non-GW resources that can help with compliance related to writing a DMS plan. Effective January 25, 2023, the NIH Data Management and Sharing Policy requires the inclusion of a Data Management and Sharing Plan with grant applications for research that results in the generation of scientific data. The goal of this policy is to promote the sharing of scientific data to accelerate biomedical research discovery. The DMS policy has the potential to advance the reuse and reproducibility of scientific data, but an awareness of compliance support resources is important for reducing the administrative burden placed on researchers. There are a number of important resources available to help researchers get started with policy compliance when applying for NIH funding. For researchers with questions about whether or not their research project is subject to the DMS policy, the NIH research covered by the 2023 Data Management and Sharing Policy Guide provides important resources, including a list of activity codes subject to the DMS policy. For those looking for an overview of policy requirements, the NIH Data Management and Sharing Policy Overview provides useful information. Next, the NIH Data Management and Sharing Policy FAQs are useful for specific policy questions, such as those related to considerations for data derived from human participants and budgeting questions. At GW, both the Himmelfarb Health Science Library and the Maine Gelman Library also maintain research guides dedicated to the DMS policy resources. Lastly, the GW Office of Sponsored Projects also maintains a website dedicated to the NIH DMS policy and related resources. What are researchers and institutions expected to do in order to comply with the DMS policy? First, researchers are expected to submit an approximately two-page DMS plan for review when applying for NIH funding. Within the document, researchers are expected to outline their plan and budget for the management and sharing of data. This plan should account for any potential restrictions or limitations on sharing, such as those related to data derived from human subjects. Lastly, researchers are also expected to comply with the approved DMS plan, which becomes a term of condition for the award. A data management and sharing plan should contain six elements. For element one, researchers should identify the type of data and amount included in the study. For element two, researchers should identify the related tools, software, and code needed to access the data. For element three, researchers should identify the standards, such as data formats, that will be applied to the data or metadata. The NIH CDE repository can be helpful here. For element four, researchers should identify the data repository being used, any persistent identifiers such as DOIs associated with the data, and approximate how long the data will be available. For element five, researchers should identify any access, distribution, or reuse considerations. This element should be used to identify sharing limitations, such as those associated with human participants. Lastly, for element six, researchers should identify the individual or group who is going to ensure oversight of the data management and sharing plan. This is often the PI, they can also occasionally include other institutional groups. There are a number of resources available to help researchers write a data management and sharing plan. The NIH maintains a DMS template with examples for the six different elements. The NIH also maintains approximately a dozen sample plans from various ICs, which provide examples for different types of research generating scientific data. GW also subscribes to DMP Tool, which is a web-based resource that allows you to create DMS plans. 
sign up for an account using your institutional SSO credentials, and utilize the various DMS templates. For GW research-related questions about DMP tool, contact the Gelman Library or the Himmelfarb Health Sciences Library. Budgeting for data management and sharing can be one of the most complicated aspects of writing a data management and sharing plan. Allowable costs include curating data, developing supporting documentation, formatting data to meet community or repository standards, de-identifying data, preparing metadata, and repository fees to support preservation and sharing. Costs which are not allowed include infrastructure costs that are included in institutional overhead, such as facilities, costs associated with the routine conduct of research, and costs that are doubly charged as both direct and indirect costs. There are a number of resources available for budgeting for data management and sharing. The NIH Budgeting for Data Management and Sharing and the NIH Develop Your Budget resources can be helpful in getting started. For GW researchers, the Office of Sponsored Project also maintains information related to direct costs for data management and sharing. Another aspect of writing a DMS plan that can be challenging for many researchers is the process of selecting a data repository. Researchers are encouraged to archive in established repositories and data type or discipline specific repositories are recommended when possible. In some cases, the NIH IC may designate a specific data repository, but in many cases it will be necessary to look elsewhere. The NIH GRAY initiative provides options for archiving in generalist repositories, including the Harvard Dataverse, Dryad, Figshare, Mendeley Data, OSF, Vivli, and Zenodo. Fortunately, there are a number of resources that can help researchers select a data repository. The NIH Selecting a Data Repository resource provides an excellent overview of various options. NIH also maintains resources related to selecting an NIH domain-specific or generalist repository for your project. The Registry of Research Data Repositories, or RE3Data, allows researchers to look for discipline-specific repositories, and the NIH BMIC group also maintains domain-specific and generalist repository resources. Lastly, the Data Repository Finder tool from the Network of the National Library of Medicine allows researchers to compare repositories or locate repositories specifically related to their data. It is important to remember that human subjects protection should take precedent over data sharing, and the NIH provides a number of recommendations for protecting participant privacy when sharing scientific data. The GW Office of Human Research also maintains a list of tools related to human subjects research. For GW researchers in need of assistance with preparing a data management and sharing plan, there are a number of offices that can provide support. The GW Office of Sponsored Projects can answer questions about allowable costs and questions related to the My Research system. The GW Office of Research Integrity can help answer compliance-related questions. The GW Research Technology Services Group can help researchers explore options related to compliant computing storage and analytics options. Lastly, the GW Gelman and Himmelfarb Health Sciences Libraries can also help with questions related to selecting a data repository or writing a DMS plan using resources such as DMP tool. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the 2023 NIH Data Management and Sharing Policy Important Resources Tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please visit our video library where you can also find the associated slides. If you have any questions about the material covered in this session or have questions specific to your own research, don't hesitate to contact us at shoover at gwu.edu. On behalf of the Himmelfarb Library Scholarly Communications Team, thank you for listening. <laughs>